These are situations designed by other people to hurt us. There are people in your life who intentionally want to hurt you. And I know many of us couldn't think of who in the world that could ever be. But there's been a time in most of our lives when that's been the case. That's why the Bible says in the Lord's Prayer that Stan led us through a minute ago, forgive us our trespasses or our debts as we forget those, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now, this is a tough one. It's one of the big tools God uses in our lives. It's one of the hardest and the most painful. And bearing the hurt of other people in our lives without getting retaliation is so hard for us because we have been wronged and we feel that we're right and we want everybody to know it and we want them to get their just desserts. But God says that that's his job and we leave that to him. The most difficult An important job in becoming like Jesus involves being misunderstood, criticized, judged, hurt, or abused. Even Jesus was misunderstood and hurt and abused. So why do we think we won't be? And we see on the cross he carried our sins. Look at Matthew 27. The people passing by, looking at Jesus on the cross, shook their heads and hurled insults at Jesus, and the elders made fun of him. Even the bandits who had been crucified with him insulted him in the same way. And what was his response? Famous line that we all know, Luke 23, verse 24, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. He suffered in silence and left those results to God. Now, if we're going to grow up spiritually and become like Jesus, we have to learn the same thing. Truth in life is that we're going to be hurt. This is not heaven. This is a fallen world. Everybody sins and everybody is hurt by people and everybody hurts other people, even sometimes so unintentionally. There are hurts that are allowed in your life and mine in order to make us like Jesus. Remember that God is in control. When you're being hurt by somebody else, and yet they don't mean it for bad, God will use it for good. Most famous story is probably the story of Joseph in the Old Testament toward the end of the book of Genesis. Remember Joseph, he was the kid with a coat of many colors. He was his father's favorite son. He wasn't very careful the way he handled himself. His brothers already extremely disliked him. And then he had began having this dream where his brothers are bowing down to him like they were worshiping him. His father gave him the coat of many colors and he was out and he decided he'd fill his brothers in on the latest dream. And he did. And they hated him all the more. Finally, they got together and they decided that they needed to get David out, I mean, uh, Joseph out of the picture. And so they decided they'd kill him. But his oldest brother said, no, we don't want to do that. Let's just throw him in this hole. So they took his coat of many colors, threw him down in this pit. It was like almost like a, a well. He couldn't get out. And they killed a wild animal and poured animal blood all over Joseph's beautiful coat, took it to his father and said, Joseph must have been killed and eaten by a wild animal. Isn't it too bad? So they went back out. He was in the pit. Some traders come on their way to Egypt. And they figured, why don't we just sell him as a slave? That'll get him out of our hair for good. And so they did. Can you imagine how Joseph must have felt? The favored son with a coat of many colors, walking behind a wagon in chains, a slave. He gets to Egypt and he becomes, he works his way up and becomes the manager of Potiphar's household. Things were really going great until Mrs. Potiphar developed a thing for him. She invited him into her bedchamber and he wouldn't go. He would not refuse or turn his back on his master. And so Mrs. Potiphar charged him with rape and he was thrown into prison. For 40 years, his life seemed to go down, down, down. And then one day, some guys he'd met in prison remembered he had ability to interpret dreams. And so Pharaoh had a dream and, and Joseph had to come and And they cleaned him up and took him to the king's, to Pharaoh's chambers. And Pharaoh told him what the dream was. And he was able to tell him what the dream meant, that a big famine was coming. And all of a sudden, 
Joseph becomes second in command of the greatest nation in the world of that time, Egypt. He controls all the food stores during a time of famine. Now that's power. And then his brothers come to Egypt looking for some food. They don't know that their brother Joseph is the head man. And then the time comes for the revealing that he was Joseph, their brother. They thought immediately the swordsman would be coming in to whack off their head. I mean, they deserved it. And then that famous line, because Joseph kept trusting God. He kept leaving the results up to God. And then Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 says this. You meant to hurt me, but God turned your evil into good to save the lives of many people, which is being done. So as we wrap up, let me ask you a couple of questions. Who do you need to forgive today? Where do you need to trust God? You've been in control and running the shots, but you know now that you need to surrender something to God. Where do you need to learn to obey him to do the right thing? Romans 8, 17. But if we go through hard times with him, we shall sure, certainly go through the good times with him. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know that, but I do know that God wants you to respond to whatever it is. So the last verse in our outline is Philippians 2, verse 5. And I want to invite you to read it with me. Let's read it together. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, life makes so much more sense when we realize that it's not about our career it's not about our being comfortable. It's all about our character and becoming like Jesus. That's the only thing we're going to take with us into eternity. Help us to use this life for the reason that you gave it to us. And I want to pray for you if you've never opened your life to Jesus Christ. Pray this simple, brief prayer with me. Jesus, I can't live like you unless I know you. So I want to get to know you today. As much as I know you, I want to know how to go about that with all my heart and all my soul. So in your name I pray and I trust and I believe. Amen.